Hello, and welcome to A History of Saps, Blackjacks, and Slung Shots. This is a personal research project of mine. I've been working on it for a while. I'm a history nerd, a weapons nerd, a occasional antique weapons collector. This one here is modern, by the way, but you're about to see a lot of antiques. And uh, the cool thing about buying antiques, weapons or not, is that it gives you an excuse to read and learn. You just want to learn more about what you picked up. And the problem with these guys is I could find almost nothing, and I mean almost nothing, to read. I've actually never seen a subject with less information out there, I mean that. So, I decided to look into them myself, and I'd like to share some of what I've learned so far while I try to kind of basically write up my findings. So, these things are pretty fascinating, believe it or not. Uh, they happen to be, I would say, the most forgotten weapons of all time. I mean, at least for something that was really once quite common. Look how thin that is. There's different kinds, as you can tell, right? Gonna kind of scroll through a few. Everything except that first one are nice and old. These are all vintage. This was confiscated by a South Texas cop back in the 60s. So let me kind of uh, review, uh, give an overview on what I find interesting about these. One, they're real evocative of different times and places. Now, the one that people would kind of think of on their own if they actually happen to recognize these is kind of the 1930s to 60s, you know, American tough guy milieu. And they are very evocative of that. That's what they're really identified with, is that kind of thing. Back in the day, a black and white movie with Humphrey Bogart, somebody gets sapped, that means getting knocked out by one of these, that kind of thing. But the roots go way, way deeper than that, so I'd like to touch on that just a little bit. These have been favorites with cops and criminals for generations. 1800s, 1900s, and now today they're enjoying their retirement. So you can pick these up on eBay. See this one? This was carried for a long time. You can just tell. Just by the fact that the strap is kind of warped to one side, that means somebody held that a lot. Probably a policeman, but uh, you can't say for sure. And uh, the other thing I really like is that uh, to this day, from a weaponry perspective, uh, there's still nothing quite like them. They're very strange, they're, they were very effective, uh, but they're also just real like improbable devices, as you'll see. So, what are they? That's a more complicated question than you'd think, but at heart, they are all small, look at that, flexible, weighted, the weight's there, impact weapons. These are essentially clubs small enough to fit in your pocket and still provide knockout power, which right away, that makes them pretty unique. Uh, a flexible club sounds a little counterintuitive, that's weird. It's that tiny, that's weird, and that despite all that, it can put somebody lights out. That's a little strange as well. Check this guy out. Yes, believe it or not, this is a weapon. You see, feel soft. This is. It's not even leather. This one. I don't know what kind of material it is exactly. Not hard leather anyway. And yes, believe it or not, this was used to knock people out with. It. It feels like a plush toy. I mean, you could put your head on it and take a nap. I think it's filled with sand mostly. I believe it has a little bit of metal at the center. So see that stitching, by the way. That brings up the other. One of the other unique features about these things, all saps, blackjacks, and slung shots have a composite nature. They're made up of more than one thing, and because of that, they have to be put together. So let's go back to this guy here. And you see that stitching all around? This is essentially a sandwich. You see it's two halves brought together. It's uh, actually needle and thread kind of holding this together. So you could be fighting for your life with a weapon that could theoretically and literally come apart at the seams. And if that sounds crazy, it is, but it's just part of the charm of these things. And despite that, they were quite effective and they were relied on by people on both sides of the law for uh, centuries, really. Now, one of the other fun things about these, check that guy out, we'll talk about him in a second. One of the other fun things is uh, on the language side, these have a really fun, rich, kind of linguistic history. So if you ask what were these called, uh, it's a complicated answer and I have to take a deep breath first. Here's just a smattering. Sap, blackjack, slung shot, obviously, but also kosh, slapper, slapjack, spoon sap, billy, billet, boston billet, sandbag, sand club, beaver tail, yes, beaver tail, persuader, bum starter, priest, and uh, et cetera, et cetera. So it's really cool. The extra crazy thing is not only do they have about a million names, most of which tend to be a lot of fun. Uh, Conk Buster's another one I like. But the names were never used consistently, really not even by the same people at the same time. So 
the terms that were generally used to describe these were also used for other things. So this guy here, for instance, we'll get to him in a second, but it probably would have been called a life preserver in Victorian England, where it came from. But a life preserver could be, back then, anything that was used to save your life, including the uh, kind of flotation device that you're familiar with. Blackjack is a word that has had many, many meanings, including at the time that it was used for a weapon. So if you were, to give you a real extreme example, if you were in a pub in London during the Renaissance, and uh, somebody said that, you know, so-and-so just knocked someone out with his leather blackjack, that actually meant the mug that was holding the beer. Now, I'd like to give kind of an overview of the major types. This is a real old timer here. This is probably the oldest one I own, by the way. This is real indicative of kind of like the American frontier era. But back to the overview. What is a sap? It's two things. One, it's any one of our weapons, right? That's the catch-all term. But it's also a weapon like this, any kind of a weighted sack or container. Just think sap, sack. Now, does it make sense for that word to have two definitions? Uh, definitely not, but it's just tradition. It's, again, part of what makes these fun. So sap, in the specific sense, is a weighted sack bag of some kind. See, that means just a bag, basically. It's got no shaft, no nothing. And you can see how, you can see how simple the construction is. It's just a folded over piece of material sewn together you know, packed with whatever you want to uh, smack somebody with. So that's a sap. Saps have been around since, as weapons, as, you know, intended weapons, at least since the Renaissance, and uh, really much further back than that. Then there's the infamous blackjack. Blackjack today and through modernity basically means a weapon like this. Notice it's much more club-like. It's still small, but it keeps its shape, right? It has kind of an actual solid shaft. Blackjack is an American invention of the late 1800s. It caught on with police and criminals uh, really wildly. Once it came about, it kind of took over the sap world and saw the retirement of, you know, this kind of instrument. And it is, again, also small, weighted, flexible. And the defining feature of a blackjack, a modern blackjack, that is, is that the shaft in there is a coil spring. So that's a sap, that's a blackjack, and here is maybe the strangest of the three main terms, a slung shot. Looks like a leather Easter egg, doesn't it? A slung shot is basically a weight on the end of a completely free swinging handle. Usually these are rope, so this would be like braided rope and then kind of a rope handle. This one here is obviously all leather except for the weight on the inside. And slung shots have been around since at least the uh, like the imperial colonial type era. So these were a sailor tool turned weapon. And uh, probably at least from the 1700s, I would say definitely before that, you know, somebody realized, hey, this tool is good for knocking people out. And I'm going to carry one around with me now in case I get in trouble. So those are our three main categories. Real quick, I just want to show the most important of offshoots, right? A couple of them. So one is the flat sap. Not hard to tell how it got its name, right? Look at that. That's pretty amazing. This is an impact weapon, if you can believe it. And uh, it's incredibly light. This feels like a, like a wallet. And maybe a slightly heavy wallet, and that is it. Now, these were invented in probably the 20th century, maybe at the very end of the, uh, of the 19th. And these were kind of a kinder, gentler blackjack. Notice the striking surface has been flattened. So that spreads the impact out more. And the idea is to kind of protect your victim a little bit. They could be thin as can be, or they could be heftier. There's a model called the Texan, and you can see that's definitely beefier. This is about as big as they got, the general ones. This one's larger, but still fit in your pocket. And the flat tops caught on with police, especially because if you're going to ride around in a squad car all day, literally sitting on your weapon, which is what you would do because this would be in kind of a back pocket, then that flat shape was a lifesaver, right? I mean, again, it almost kind of just felt like you had a wallet back there. And then, let's get to the strangest of the offshoots. It's kind of a precursor slash offshoot. Back to this guy, the life preserver. Look at that. This wonderful attention to detail. It's pretty amazing. And as you can see, it's basically a very small club with a flexible head. This thing is weighted. It's also kind of made up of more than one ingredient, you know, like all of ours. It's wood, it's whatever kind of connection this is, and it's lead on the inside. 
Love this guy here. So if you read any story, kind of circa Sherlock Holmes, if you will, and somebody's getting knocked out with a life preserver, this is what they meant. Uh, these were used by police in Britain, even though they're, you know, obviously much more famous for the one-piece wooden truncheon, but they did use these once in a while as well, and uh, criminals most certainly did. So here's a very odd one. Are you ready? See the holster? Very homespun, right? And check that guy out. Is that one of the strangest weapons you've ever seen? Tiny little thing. So how did all of these work? They all work the same way, regardless of what type. They combined the flexibility. They had different versions of flexibility, right? This one's got flat spring steel providing it. This one has obviously just the fact that it's loose leather, but they all provided impact via the flexibility, the momentum that would provide you when you swung it, and the weight in the head. The weight could be anything, but uh, often it was lead because lead's just you know nice and dense, nice and heavy. So there's a saying, lead in the head, when it comes to saps. And here's an important thing that, uh, once again, that kind of makes these stand out. The weight could be hard or soft. You hear that? There's loose buckshot rolling around in there. So that is a soft sap. Just like this guy here, our little sandbag. A sandbag or a sand club was kind of uh, probably the original sap and definitely has very ancient roots. So soft saps are ex extra unique because they have some very strange physical properties. There are specialized carpentry tools and even specialized, there's like an aerospace tool that use the exact same design as these guys. Because when that soft load strikes, even in the instant of that hit, the, the loose buckshot or sand or whatever it is, it kind of shifts around and moves, so it delivers the impact over a greater period of time. That allows it to deliver driving impact and put the person's lights out, but basically protect the surface, meaning their, their skull usually. So these were used to knock people out without cracking their skulls or even opening up a kind of a bleeding wound. So you can see why they appealed to criminals so much. It was a great way to, you know, mug someone. Uh, soft saps were the original stun gun, basically. And that's part of the history that I find really interesting. So let me see if I can squeeze a few on here. And we should also do kind of a demonstration, shouldn't we? So back to this blackjack. Look how small this is. And again, it's, it's really just quite light. And let me secure the phone and check this out. You hear that? That was just barely any wrist motion on my part. So you can only imagine if you put really arm, shoulder, and God forbid, hips into it, the kind of damage you would do. So I'd like to follow this up uh, by deep diving on different specimens in my collection and talking about what kind of makes them interesting, at least to me. But for now, that is it. Thank you very much.